Okay, we're entering another camp here. I'm not sure which side it is. Looks like we're at a field uh, photography studio. already prepared that um, Bryce you might want to see by your leathers. Okay. Eventually get around. What is it. that? Which one? Crank there. That little crank handle. That's for uh, rolling bandages. Oh, rolling bandages. Okay. So you put mm. that in, roll it up. Got it. And that's what it's for. Winder. Bandage winder. Bandage winder. Mm -hmm. Exactly so. All right. All right. Bury them where they found. Levi got home on the 16th of September, 1961. Yeah. Unheard of. Unheard of. You know? Even today, we'd like to bury our dead three, four days later and then go more in a week. No, I don't know. No, no, no. Our stuff would be good for 50 years. This stuff, all depending on the concoction that you would use, they would use their own concoction. Uh, it wouldn't always last. Levi got home. And on the 17th of September, 1861, he had a funeral in the Hillstone Mission. The president of Hillstone College at that time uh, because all the men left to go to war, all the male students went to war. I guess he didn't have a lot to do, so he did the eulogy. And if you want to look on the Historical Society's page there, the Hillstone Historical Society, they have letters from the battlefield, uh, men that were in the same tent with him, and what they saw. You have the uh, eulogy and the, from the paper, the paper articles, stuff like this. He was buried that day, the 17th, uh, after the funeral. They took him to Hamden Township. At that time, the first Hamden Township has two uh, cemeteries. And the first one. And they buried him there. To follow him, his father and his mother, three years later, so you go there and see their tombstones there. You can't do that. Now, what happened to Caroline and the five kids? They went to Branch County, but I lost track. Because they probably changed their names. She got married. The kids probably took Dad's name. I don't know where they But I can go back this way. I can go back all the way to New York, all the way to the old country, because he's my cousin. So and so Levi. His father from the upstate New York over here. So that's part of how he got his 25 bucks over because he had a lot of family in the area that was able to help him. Now, how many? 40,000? 40,000 is a lot of people. 
but not when you think how many people died. Now, 20 years ago, when I first started doing this, the number was 650,000. But because of technology and archaeology and things like we keep looking and we keep studying, uh, not only this war, but other wars that we've had, um, we now have uh, a conservative estimate of 850,000 people were killed. That's soldiers and civilians uh, that were killed. And the, the top end of that conservative number is one million. One million would have been one out of 10 people in our country that were killed. Can you imagine how that would happen today? If we lost one out of 10 of you, what would happen to our society? Come to this creature? Oh. Well, that's why we're looking for exactly how many, because we still feel the effects, negative as well as some good things. I mean, I think the industry we have in, in uh, mortuary science is a positive thing. Medicine made uh, huge uh, jumps in uh, work there. Uh, we made better war machines. Well, I mean, that, that's not negative. That's positive. No, that's not positive. That's negative. But when you think about it, that's a lot of people. So, if you haven't started your ancestry, start doing it now. Because, like, my grandparents were gone before I was born. And I tried to find out what my grandfather and grandmother were like. And uh, what, how, what, how they did things, you know. And I got a little bit here, a little bit there. But then, all of a sudden, all my aunts and uncles are gone. And I don't know anything about my aunt and my grandmother and grandfather. My grandfather, I know a little more. Because he was a character. Uh, <laughs> grandma, not so much, but uh, we're from Hillsdale, born and raised, multiple generations, and uh, they're all down there. I'm the only one who moved away. Out of all my five first cousins, I'm the only one who moved out of town. <laughs> I moved all the way to Canada. I was like Bully. His name was Bully. He was hard-headed, probably, and he just, I'm going. <laughs> Do you have any other questions that I can answer? I guess it doesn't matter because they were already dead. These are pretty nasty chemicals on them. Arsenic and lead. And oh, well. Formaldehyde. Formaldehyde well, didn't yeah. come. It wasn't around then. Another 10 years. Yeah. But uh, carcinogens, yeah. Creosol. <laughs> Creosol, well, that's not, well, that's a carcinogen yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well, some pretty just nasty did, stuff you think you know, about Some it. just did straight. Alcohol. Well, you had to kill the bugs. Well, yeah, I understand that. Now, yeah. we don't know about germs yet. Yeah, they, but we had to kill the bugs. We understand the, germs. the bugs. Yeah. And the bugs, you know, when the body died at home, uh, sometimes people knew more uh, when the body died because they felt and heard the death bugs at night okay. coming to the dead body before they even got up and known the person passed. So there's death bugs. Okay? And there's flies and stuff like this right. that we, we understood would make this body decompose so quickly. So they'd use ice, they would use alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and put them on ice, and that kept them for three days. 